Today I will discuss commit, save configuration log, save configuration snapshots, import and export and other topics covering configuration management. Lots of topics to be discussed and it's all part of the Palo Alto Education 210 firewall essential, so stay tuned. I will start with a commit. A commit involves saving the candidate configuration to the running configuration. The Palo Alto firewall has a running configuration, which is the configuration currently active on the firewall. When an admin logs in, the running configuration is copied over to the candidate configuration and all changes made to the firewall are applied to the candidate configuration first until a commit is executed. When a commit is pushed, the candidate configuration is copied over to the firewall running configuration, making all the admin changes active. Now, let's start with the commit action. I have created a new object for a kind of DMZ network, as shown here. If I go to the right and want to commit the configuration, push this new configuration change into the firewall, I have a few options. If I drop down the menu, the commit window will appear. I can review what changes I have, been, I have made. It states under the policy and an object that I've created some DMZ objects and it's an address type object. If I want to preview the changes in the XML, I can click preview changes. I specify how many lines of configuration I want to display. Creating address object only takes a few lines, so 10 will be enough. I click OK and we should see the changes that have been made. Here is the running configuration and on the right hand side we have the candidate configuration with its changes. I have created a DMZ with a network 172.16.16 network, so we can see it here. There is also an option to validate the commit if you are making a lot of changes to the firewall. You can regularly come here and validate the configuration. If you create a complex configuration such as building a brand new VPN or new remote access VPN, you can come here and regularly check that the steps you have taken are valid. I will also show you later how to pre-stage your changes, save them and then apply them later. When you pre-stage all the changes, you can come here and check or validate the configuration you just done. As expected, the configuration is valid. I have just created a simple address object here. So the validation was successful. The last thing here is the change summary. Here you can see again what object was created, the operation create or remove, and who created it. I'm logging as admin, so it's admin. Now, let's apply the changes and commit the configuration. The commit goes through the whole process of checking the changes are valid before they are pushed into the running configuration. Now, the commit is completed and the address object I've created for the DMZ subnet 172.16.16 is no longer part of the candidate configuration, but it's now part of the running configuration. You can also see that there are no further changes to, be co to commit as the commit button is grayed out. In previous section, I've discussed the configuration commit. Now, let's take a look at the commit and configuration logs. The log can be set to prevent other administrators from making changes. There are two options, either block changes to the candidate configuration or prevent admin from committing their changes. There are two options for taking a log. If you click on the log in the top right corner and take a log in the new window, the default option is commit. If I select this option, no other administrator will be able to commit their changes until I finish my work but they can still make changes to the candidate configuration. If I select a config log, they will not be able to make any changes to the candidate configuration. In the description, I can type something like change 1234, click OK, and now config log is set. I can still make changes. I can create another type of the network, like a DMZ with the subnet 1 and 2, 1, 6, 8, 11, dot 0, slash 24. As you can see, I'm here as an admin and here as an admin read write. Let's see if I can create objects on the firewall with a log from a different admin. Let's add a DMZ with the IP address of 10.10.10.0/24. And no, I'm not able to make any changes to the firewall because the configuration is logged by other admin. So this is behavior or, or this behavior is expected. If I had just a commit log, I would be able to make a changes 
but I would not be able to commit them. The original administrator who set the log after all the changes are completed, completed will commit the configuration and then log should be removed. Then all other engineers can make a changes to the firewall. There is also option to set the commit log automatically. Under the device setup management general settings is option to set automatic commit log. This is handy feature if there are multiple administrators who are making changes to firewall on a regular basis. It helps to prevent configuration overlap. I will create another object here, DMZ2 with the IP 10.10.10.0/24. Again, I have made changes to the candidate configuration. The running configuration is not affected. I haven't committed the configuration yet. And if the firewall restart for whatever reason now, I would lose the candidate configuration and all changes that were not committed. If you make changes to a single object, it's not a big deal. But if you make large changes to the configuration, like building a VPN, that could be quite big loss. Palo Alto recommends that once you make a change, save the configuration regularly. Click Save Changes and it will also give you a preview of your changes here. Here's a change summary, who created it, and you can preview change in XML format. Same with the commit. Now I can save it. If the firewall restarts and I will log back in, I will be able to retrieve those uncommitted changes. When I tested it last time, the uncommitted changes were automatically loaded after the reload. Alternatively, you can go to the device operation and revert to the last save configuration option. I can also revert back to running configuration if I made changes and for some reason the validation during the commit fail and I wish to start from beginning. The option is to revert back to running config and start from scratch. Now let's have a look at the device and operation. Here is a configuration management section and we have few options here. We have revert, save and load. And those are the operation with the configuration files that are currently on the firewall. Export and import are for exporting, importing configuration either from your local machine or from some other remote location. In the previous section, I have showed what the revert section does for safe candidate configuration and for running configuration. Let's carry on with the save section. The save name configuration snapshot. This is a great feature for baselining the configuration. For example, I can say this configuration is a pre-stage or pre-production and that's the setup I know it will not change. I can label it as a pre-prod and save it. Now the configuration file is saved as a pre-prod. And if something goes wrong and I want to go back to pre-prod configuration, I can just come here click load name configuration snapshot and from the drop down menu select the preprod and click OK. It will change the firewall back to the setup. It was after the preprod commit. This is very good feature. I use it a lot when I'm doing lab work on the firewall. I set up the baseline configuration, then I make changes for one lab, get it all working and once I'm finished or ready to go back to the baseline configuration, I can just easily revert back and have firewall ready for new lab. Load configuration snapshot, as I said, is a very good feature. For example, it's very good before you make any changes to the firewall. For example, you have a change to roll out something more complex on the firewall. I usually save a name configuration snapshot and name it exactly what I want, like pre-change and the number of the change. So I know the firewall was at this state before I made any changes to it. And if anything goes wrong, I can easily revert. It's a live jacket for any changes on Palo Alto firewall. Another option is to load a configuration version. Every time you commit the firewall changes, firewall will save the commit in its memory. So you will have a list of different commits in a, in a memory. As you can see, there are a lot of them on my firewall. If you are in a production environment, the list will be much longer. And you can pick any version at any time. Make sure your time and date is set up correctly for easy operation on your firewall. For example, a typical scenario where we use 
where we use it is when someone makes changes to the firewall the night before and you come in the morning to the office and everyone is shouting because something doesn't work. You may not know what changes were made to the firewall as it was poorly documented. The easiest way is to have a look just before the change was made at the previous configuration here. In my case, for example, select version 9, click OK, the configuration is being loaded now and the firewall will load the old configuration. It will be like a pre-change config, so you know everything was reverted back and hope, hopefully the firewall be back in a working order. It always tells you to check the task manager. Here at the bottom right corner is a task manager where you can open it and it will actually tell you if the last job you requested is already completed. Now, my load configuration snapshot has completed and I believe if I go to object, some of my object will disappear. Yes, I can see all the config I've created have disappeared because the configuration was loaded from the time before the change. Export and import, again, very similar, just that you are exporting not to the firewall memory or storage, but to external storage. So it could be your laptop. If you click export name configuration snapshot, it does the same thing as save name configuration snapshot. You can name the configuration and export it to your laptop for whatever reason you want to do. Export configuration version, again, will let you pick one of the previous commits snapshot and you can export it. The last option is export device state. So what's the difference between a device state and configuration? Configuration is just your configuration, which will be the XML file required for the configuration of the device your firewall. Device state will also include things like certificates. If you are using a VPN, if you are using a panorama, there will be also templates and other required information for panorama to work with the firewall. There are much more information in a device tape. I would use the device tape type for regular backup of your firewall to external storage if you want to back it up to uh, external storage. Then we have an import name configuration snapshot. The same thing if you created a snapshot, you can import it here. And here you can import the device state if you had one stored outside of your firewall. And here are the last few things on this page as an added bonus to configuration management. There are option to reboot or shut down this device from the GUI and here is the device history. In my case it is completely empty but once your firewall is upgraded and in production this can happen multiple times during its lifespan, here will be the whole upgrade history of your firewall. Thanks for watching. Please Hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you next time.